Look at that, that is a homemade steak gyro, but we are talking base camp cooking here today. We are making steak gyros, Greek salad, tzatziki sauce, and then we're cooking some things on a pit boss griddle, and it's all sitting on top of this Thiessen's pop-up workstation. But come along as we talk about base camp cooking and a great set of recipes to cook up for your crew. Let's get cooking. <music> I've never actually griddled feta before. Sure, more sauce, I'm a saucy guy. Yes, this is what you want. Well, here is our base unit for the pit pos griddle that we are testing out today. And as you can see, we've got a couple features. On the sides, we do have some handles that make it easy grabbing. Also on the front here, we do have a drip cup for all those yummy, greasy things that come off whatever you're making. This is a propane adapter. Looks like we have two burners, self igniter. And as far as what we have on the inside here, we've got two different shapes of heat here. One, a larger coil for a little bit larger surface area and one for uh, a little bit less surface area, but that can be really great depending on what you're cooking. But over here could be great for something for nice even heat, you know, maybe like a pancake or some really high heat for uh, some searing like we're gonna probably do today, but just gives you some options and some uh, ability to control how much heat is getting to that griddle. But overall, very sturdy construction not too heavy to move around, but it does have a nice heft, so it doesn't feel like it's all that uh, cheap. Here are some other pieces that are included that we aren't necessarily gonna look at today, but it, as you can see here from the old diagram here, so this is the base model with a, some short feet. Yep, little short feet over there. So that can be on your tailgate, trail gate, or something sturdy or a table but it does have the feature to be able to set up like a normal gas grill with some wheels, some sturdy legs. It also does come with these two side extensions for a little bit more surface area to work with and also a trash can holder uh, over there, which that's kind of a fun, fun feature. Plus looks like some hooks for your utensils and things. Also have the, the base shelf, which is that we've got here too plus our legs and some other uh, other drip trays and things. But again, we aren't gonna put this all together today because I have a table to cook on that I also wanna try. And here is our star of the show today, the griddle. And by what they're telling me from the package, we have 421 square inches. Wow, that one square inch is really gonna do it. And it is 23 by 18 inches as far as the griddle size and cooking area. So pretty, pretty good area to be able to make quite a bit of food for a lot of people. And the one thing I did notice when I was un unpacking this is this is heavy and heavy in a good way. And that way, hopefully we're gonna have some nice even heat and some good heat retention for longer cooks. But let's put this thing together. And also I'll show you what I am cooking on today. So this is a brand, Thiessen's. This is relatively new to me. They do have some backpacking stuff, so stay tuned for a full stove report on that. But this is base camp, base camp table setup. I already set this up once, and man, I'm already excited about it. So we got a nice tote. Let's see here. Mind how how this happens. Oh yeah, that's right. So this accordion's up and locks into place on the side with the legs. Oh. Then this folds out for, oh, yeah, okay. Got some legs down here. There we go. Really solid cooktop. 
couple things down here. This also has a either trash or prep sink area. So you can dispose of your gray water down here, but that also folds out. You know, I am 6'2", so this is tall for me, but for most of you folks out there, this is really, really perfect prep area. But still, this is pretty awesome to have really quick setup for your base camp cooking. But once you come around here, and we'll take a look at some other features. So the length of this one plus the length of this one is this. But then the other kind of interesting thing, this I, I, I flipped this all around so you guys can see. So we have actually a pretty amazing outdoor cupboard here. So you wanna come in and take a look at this. We'll take a look a little bit closer. But it does come with some shelves. So those get in there so it's nice and sturdy. So you could really set up a pretty darn nice base camp here and be here for multiple days. You know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for every day setup, but if, if you are someplace for three, four or five days, you're hunting and fishing, you're out scouting some area and just coming back to base camp, or if you're car camping, this could be really, really nice for you. And one thing I forgot here is a really can be really really helpful windscreen with little indents here so it secures right in so if it is windy at camp which sometimes it is this can be really really nice to be able to put your prep ingredients here maybe your parsley or, or green onions so they don't fly away or put your stove right here so it can protect against that I haven't cooked on this yet, but I am getting excited. I've got my pit boss over here. I've got my base camp cooking setup. So let's put it all together and make something already because I'm hungry. It's actually quite, quite manageable, quite light. The other thing to note here about Pit Boss and Thesons and a couple of these other brands, it's all the same parent company. So thanks to Pit Boss, Thesons, and the whole family for sending this to me so I could test it out for you guys um, and also take this on the road with me. I'm, I'm again really, really excited for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly set up our base camp kitchen and we're gonna go ahead and make our tzatziki sauce first, our Greek salad, and then get our steak and pita grilled up on the grill here, plus some other things that I'm kind of looking to try to maybe be a nice add-on for our Euro style sandwiches. But let's get cooking. We're all set up here for our first component of our Greek lunch or Greek dinner. And we are making tzatziki sauce first. So what we have for our, our sauce is some Greek yogurt, some lemon, some parsley, some fresh mint. You can also use some fresh dill. A lot of recipes have fresh dill in there. I like to just use these two, but you could also use the trio. We've got some cucumber, but we're gonna actually be using just the inside for the sauce and a little bit of seasoning, a little bit of, of olive oil, and a couple cloves of fresh garlic. But you can also use powdered garlic if you like. This will give you the, the, the best bang for your, your ingredient to get that really nice fresh garlic flavor in there. But why we're making this first is this needs to sit. So this needs to chill. This needs to come together over 30, 45 minutes. So you can easily make this ahead or make this first while you're prepping everything else or while you're running after Junior by the river. But let's go ahead and make our tzatziki sauce. And you've probably seen this on other cooking shows, but in order to get that garlic nice and fine, what I'm gonna do is use the side of the knife and just kind of use a sort of a spackle technique, garlic paste. So you don't get a big old nugget in your mouth, even though maybe that's what you want. Now you could also use some roasted garlic too. That could be a nice addition. Throw that in a bowl. And I'm just using this water reservoir here today for some pack out trash. So that can be pretty helpful too. Here is just the inside of the cucumber. So this is an English cucumber. So nice soft skin. So you don't necessarily have to peel it. If you're using the other sturdy guy, maybe you want to peel it a little bit. You can give this inside stuff a rough chop too, but we're making it rustic today. We're cooking outside. I'm going to reserve these cucumbers for our Greek salad. 
So then I'll just chop up our herbs. Nice, quick little rough chop. All right, that's looking nice for me. Nice, fresh herbs into our bowl. We'll add our Greek yogurt. And you can also do a combination of Greek yogurt or sour cream if you like. But for me, this is Greek, Greek night, so Greek yogurt is just great. We'll hit it with the juice of some lemon. You could also use some white vinegar or cider vinegar if you don't want to pack a lemon. But this should be pretty tart and pretty acidic because we're going to have some really rich flavors coming up. So put olive oil in there. We do have a little bit of seasoning in there already, but you could add a little bit of salt or fresh cracked pepper as well. You could always add a little bit more salt for seasoning later. And we will let that sit while we prep our Greek salad and finally get to cooking our steak gyros. Tzatziki sauce here, hanging out. Now it's time for our Greek salad. I love Greek salad because it is so quick, so easy, and only has a few ingredients, and it's very customizable to what you like. But come on in, let's take a look. We've got some fresh tomatoes. We've got those cucumbers that we burrowed out earlier. We've got a red onion. We've got a bell pepper. You know, if you don't like onion, you know, don't put it in there. If you want to throw some zucchini or some yellow squash from the garden that you still have, that could be really great. You could also throw some olives, some cheese, but it's really, really easy. So what we're going to do is just do a quick rough chop and mix it all up. And for onion, I always add just a moderate amount and then give it a stir because onion can be pretty, pretty potent. Wow, look at that. So reminder, we've got a few tomatoes. We've got one cucumber, one bell pepper, half an onion right now. And we hit it with some olive oil. Again, you could hit it with some vinegar. But I've got this other lemon here hanging out in the sun, so might as well just use that for our acid. little bit of seasoning. This happens to be a Greek seasoning or all-purpose seasoning, but you know, just salt and pepper is just fine, but something, something with some salt in it. And then we're just going to give that a nice mix. Again, you can really customize this how you like it, but really economical salad with just these few ingredients that are really easy to throw in your cart at the grocery store. You've got a big old salad that could feed your crew. So again, this is really important that this sits for a few minutes so that those flavors can really come together. You know, we just introduced four or five different ingredients together in this bowl. They need to, they need to say hello, they need to shake each other's hand, and they need to, to see how everything's going. Ooh, nice. But we've got our tzatziki sauce, and we've got our Greek salad here in the nice fall sunshine. But man, let's make some gyros. So I turned on the griddle here to a nice medium, medium high heat. This is my first time using this, so I'm not quite sure how hot this gets, but we're gonna kind of test it out together. But we are making steak euros here today. So you can also use chicken, chicken thighs, chicken breast, old rotisserie chicken that you wanna use up, you really, or make some sort of veggie situation. But what I've got here is a couple of steaks from the freezer. And this happens to be a couple ribeyes and a couple sirloins. It's also a really great meal to make with sort of some cheaper cuts. If you wanna go filet mignon euros, man, go, go nuts. Your friends are gonna be super, super happy. But what I did is I just cut it nice and thin, put some seasoning on there, a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of extra garlic powder, and a little bit of oil, and that's been marinating. But you could also use some Greek seasoning, some za'atar seasoning, a little bit of sumac to get it that Greek Greek flavor, but that's just been sitting for about 30 minutes, but that should be really, really nice. But we are looking for a thin slice here 
So they'll cook up nice and quick and get some nice, hopefully some char on there from that griddle. And if you are a hunter, this could be a great way to use that elk, venison, bear you might have in your freezer right now. Uh, and I know you might be needing to make a little bit of space uh, for the season coming up here. So think about that. That could be a really nice option. And the other thing I have here while our griddle is heating up is some pita bread. So you can use the pocket, pocket pita bread or the puffy pita bread, whichever one you like. But what we're gonna do is toast it. And I know you've, if you've watched any of my, my videos before, is please, please toast your bread somehow. Toast is not bread, bread is not toast. They're so different and toast is so good and you need to do it. So one thing to note as we've been wobbling and as we've been cooking is whatever your cooking surface is, make sure your feet are not falling off because that would be a really dangerous and sad time if your griddle falls off of your tailgate or your table that you're working on. So I'm just making sure that we've got a, a, a nice amount of room here and we're not getting over like that for tippy tip. I don't know how hot this is. I don't know how hot this cooks, but one way to test it out is with a little beer. That's looking pretty hot. Yep, that's looking real hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my heat down a little bit because that seems a little, little too much for me. But also, hey man, we're gonna try it out. We've got some really nice heat here. Hit it with a little bit of olive oil. Could also throw a little butter. And let's see for our first maiden voyage for steak. Yes, that is what you wanna hear. And we've got a lot of surface area here. So getting that in a nice thin layer is really key for nice sear because if you were to pile it up like this, this area is going to steam before it sears. So I don't necessarily want that. I want nice thin layers of this. And you know this other side, I'm going to turn it back up and just let's see what this thing does. Oh, wow. So while this is sizzling, you can also think about other great things you can cook on this from Philly cheesesteak, chicken fillies, obviously great breakfasts to make some a big batch of fried rice on here to get some nice, nice crispy color. You can make some chow mein or whatever you want, but man, this smells really good already. And what I'm doing here is I'm resisting the urge to move it around because I want that really nice crispy color to get on there. And we don't necessarily need to cook it exactly on both sides like a steak here. We just need to cook it through and get some of that really nice char on there. Yes, that is what we want. Oh, there we go. Yep. So now that we're cooked most of the way here, I'm just going to do a big old mishmash here. But man, you can really feed an army here with this griddle. All right, let's give it a try. Mm. Yep. That's pretty darn tasty. So while we got this thing on, let's test out a couple other things before we toast our bread and put together lunch. So I've got that other half of onion. Let's do a little caramelized onion on there. And I've got some feta cheese. Sure, let's see what happens with it on the griddle. It says it's got a nonstick coating. And I also have some random cheese from the cheese drawer. Sure, well, let's see what happens. I've never actually griddled feta before. See what that looks like. And then also on the other side, let's go ahead and start to toast up our bread over here. We've got a little bit of meat juice too, which is always a good idea. Oh man. Oh, look at how cheesy that looks. Yes. 
approval from the camera crew. All right, let's check out this. Let's check out this feta. You know, it's getting pretty soft. It's almost kind of like goat cheese, so let's test it out. I've got to be really careful with this because I know it's going to be really hot. Mm. <laughs> it's really good. It's got that beef fat in there too, meat juice. Yeah, it's pretty darn good. The caramelized onions are coming together really nicely. You can turn the heat down and let these really get, get nice and brown, but these are looking, wow, really, really nice. So again, if you're thinking Philly cheesesteak, this is something for you. Oh, get our, our nice toasted bread there. We are cooking, and this is awesome. Looks like, wow, we, and we that oil down here, that is flavor. Let's get, let's get some of that on there. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the heat off and reset here and assemble this beautiful, beautiful lunch or dinner. All right, well, I'll just leave these caramelized onions here, but let's build our steak gyro. So I, remember, we've got our nice toasted pita. Oh, what am I doing? So we've got our tzatziki sauce. Make sure to test it before and see if it needs a little bit more salt, a little bit more something, but a big old schmear on there. You could also schmear maybe a little bit of hummus on there too. Sure, more sauce. I'm a saucy guy. Oh, that looks good already. Next time we'll get it even hotter than what I had so we get a little bit more char, but still, I'm, I'm pretty excited about what that is. The other thing about this steak that I had, and another good thing about this recipe is a couple of these were pretty freezery, so uh, they're not the overall best quality, but who cares? You're slapping it in a, in a pita with some sauces and some great Greek salad. So what I like to do, nice big chunky Greek salad, you don't have to do this, you can just eat it as is, but I love throwing that on there. So it's all just mushed in there together. And then you can even add some chili, you could add a little pepperoncini, a little bit of olives. Choose your own adventure. I want some more sauce. Oh, yep, oh yeah, oh come on. We've got our fresh tzatziki sauce just sitting there waiting for us. We've got our chunky Greek salad, we've got our grilled steak or whatever protein you want, toasted pita. And now we get to eat it. Mm hmm give me a minute. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yes, this is what you want. But again, you can make this for a crew, just make it for a couple people, customize it, make it your own, but make your own tzatziki sauce. It's absolutely amazing and super, super easy. But get out there, cook something amazing somewhere awesome, whether it's base camp cooking, on the trail or whatever. But again, thanks again to Pit Boss and Thesons for sending this stuff so I can share it with you guys. But get out there. Boca Boca.